Archaic Records. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Archaic Records here with you again. My name is Jamie, coming at you from Nashville, Tennessee, and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about one of my favorite Jamaican records from the 1980s, Black Man Foundation, Black Man's Foundation by Jamaican reggae prodigy Hugh Mundell. Hugh Mundell was born in Kingston, Jamaica on June 14th, 1962. As a young man, many people thought that Hugh Mundell's uh, road to immortality would uh, be paved through his remarkable athleticism. Even as a very little kid, uh, Hugh Mundell displayed tremendous talent as both a sprinter uh, and as a soccer player. Uh, but as Hugh entered his early teenage years, uh, he became completely fascinated by the world of music. Uh, and by the time he reached about 15 years old, his interest had grown into a complete and total obsession I think a lot of us who are diehard music fans can kind of relate to that uh, sort of story. Uh, when Hugh Mundell was about 15 years old, he officially became sort of uh, introduced to the world, uh, at least the professional world of music, when he was introduced to producer Boris Gardner, who was a friend of his father's. Uh, around the same time, Hugh Mundell, Hugh Mundell began hanging out at Joe Gibbs' studio where he sort of became a fixture, uh, began honing his craft as a singer and as a songwriter. And in 1976, with the help of Joe Gibbs, uh, Hugh Mundell cut his first track, Where Is Natty Dread? Uh, that was a song that would at the time go unreleased, uh, but it inspired Hugh Mundell to continue honing his songwriting and singing craft. And in 1978, he released his first full-length album, Africa Must Be Free by 1983. Uh, this was an album that he had written himself and performed on, and he was only 16 years old at the time. Uh, in 1980, he released his second album, Jaw Fire, and in 1982, he released his uh, third album called Mundell. Now, I own all three of those records. They're sitting right over there in my record pile. Uh, but I decided to go with this one first, because this was the first record I ever owned of Hugh Mundell's, and it is my favorite. But I'm going to talk about all three of those other records also at length. Uh, I think I mentioned this in the Stiv Baders video. I just never get tired of uh, preaching the gospel of Hugh Mundell. Uh, so you will definitely hear more about him on this channel. I think that he is absolutely incredible. Uh, sadly... On October 14th, 1983, Hugh Mundell was shot and killed on Grants Penn Avenue in Kingston, Jamaica, following an altercation with the brother of a man who was suspected of burglarizing Mundell's house just a few days earlier. Uh, now, it's funny, I've heard some people say, and I've read uh, about the death of Hugh Mundell. Well, on the bright side, he left behind this tremendous collection of records and this great legacy of songwriting. Uh, and although at face value I would agree with that in terms of the music he left behind, he's one of my favorite Jamaican artists from the 1980s. Uh, I, I don't and I never have seen the bright side to a 21-year-old kid, any 21-year-old kid, being senselessly gunned down in the streets. And although I think when people say the bright side in regards to his music, I don't think they mean any like disrespect by it, uh, but really to uh, suggest that there's any bright side to a 21-year-old kid, any 21-year-old kid being gunned down in the street is completely asinine. Uh, it's sort of funny nowadays with the world we live in now and the, the bipolarization of our culture and how reactionary people are. Uh, it seems like if you mention to somebody that you're anti-gun violence... People come back at you with, you're trying to take away my guns, boy! And it really has nothing to do with that. Uh, I just think, I personally, I just get really tired of hearing stories like this every week, every day in the news, especially in this country. And again, this has nothing to do with the Second Amendment. This has nothing to do, uh, don't worry, nobody's coming to take away your guns. Uh, just for me personally, I get really burnt out 
and uh, I'm tired of hearing and seeing stories of young people being gunned down senselessly in the streets. Uh, my relationship with Hugh Mundell began probably uh, in the mid to late 1990s. Uh, again, I was just sort of starting to get into this music. And I don't remember where I saw it, but I do remember how I sort of got turned on to Hugh Mundell. I am assuming it was in like a book or a magazine at the time. Uh, but I remember I saw this picture, which is the picture that happens to be on the back of this album. And I saw this in a book or a magazine. I don't remember which one it was. And I remember thinking to myself, I don't care who this guy is. I have to hear this guy's music. He is probably the coolest person I've ever seen. Now, I don't know if you were ever that cool, but I can assure you that I wasn't. So, my next possible convenience, I'm not sure how long it took for me at the time to find a Hugh Mundell record, but this was the first one I found on CD, Black Man's Foundation. Uh, I took it home, and two things that struck me immediately one is just his voice is one of the most beautiful, uh, amazing voices in the history of Jamaican music, any era of Jamaican music. And his songwriting, especially for being as young as he was, his songwriting was absolutely off the hook. Uh, had his life not been cut tragically short, uh, it's my opinion that Hugh Mundell was on a trajectory uh, to really kind of put himself on the Mount Rushmore of this style of music. Uh, I think that his singing, his, his songwriting uh, were absolutely top notch. And he also had just had some intangibles uh, to me that you can't really just like put your finger on. I mean, just an incredible style, which I think does go a long way. Uh, and not to mention the fact that the guy was almost just like unnaturally good looking, uh, doesn't help or doesn't hurt. Uh, but this guy, I think it, he had, he, had his life not been cut short. I mean, this guy, I think, would eventually have ended up in the same conversations with the big boys. I'm talking like Bob, uh, Toots, Jimmy Cliff, Scratch Perry, Yellow Man. I think he is in that conversation uh, if he had been given the uh, luxury of living a full life uh, and seeing where his career was going to take him. Because I, I think the four records that he put out as it is are some of the best in the genre, and I think as he as his uh, career uh, continued, I think he continu he uh, consistently got better and better uh, as a singer, as a songwriter, uh, and just everything. I think that this guy would have changed. I think he could have been another one of those people that sort of transcended Jamaican music. I think he could have been another person to help push this music more into the mainstream. And again, it's just such a Sad uh, tragedy that Hugh Mundell died at 21 years old. And it's hard to imagine, it's hard to think that he's been dead for 40 years. In uh, next month, in October. Or October, he'll be have been dead 40 years. Anyway, this record, Black Man's Foundation, came out in 1988. It is produced by Augustus Pablo. And like I said, this was the first Hugh Mundell record I ever owned. It probably is my favorite. Like I said, I'm going to go back and talk about all those other records at some point in time. I just love this guy. Uh, but this record starts off with the title track, Black Man's Foundation. I love the instrumentation on this song, but the first thing that just strikes you as soon as the record starts is uh, the pure beauty of Hugh Mundell's voice. Uh, again, I think he was one of the greatest singers uh, in the history of Jamaican music. This song is a love letter to Africa, uh, and for lack of a better term, blackness, really. Uh, I don't know how else to say it. I really love the song Black Man's Foundation. Uh, again, uh, Hugh Mundell, one of the greatest songwriters, especially for his age in the genre. Uh, absolutely beautiful song. Uh, the second song is Great Tribulation. This song has a really cool brassy intro. Again, the voice is just, it makes your, it just blows your mind uh, how amazing his voice was. Uh, this song has got a great groove. It's got really great guitar work. Uh, I would say it's, uh, 
lyrically and vocally, it's pretty straightforward, but the voice is just absolutely incredible. Uh, the third song is Time Has Come. Uh, this song just kind of like drops in, kind of sits next to you. You look over, you're like, hey, how's it going? Uh, this song is just cool. Uh, I mean, sometimes I always say when uh, Hugh Mundell gets into his activism uh, mode as a songwriter, he is one of the greatest in the history of the genre. Uh, but sometimes he's just like the king of cool, and that's sort of what the song time has come. Uh, it's just got a cool swagger. It's got a cool beat. It's got cool lyrics. And really, uh, is there anything cooler than a song about death? I don't know. But the song uh, Time Has Come uh, is just a really cool uh basic straightforward awesome song uh side one ends with a song uh, stop em ja uh, the song is raw it's honest it's both pessimistic and optimistic uh it uh, he you know he describes finding himself uh in a in his current environment it's bleak it's depressing it's dangerous it's a little scary uh but as it says in the song uh, it's not too late. Uh, great lyrics, great instrumentation, uh, great message, a uh, song of hope, a song of reality and hope, I believe. Uh, Hugh Mundell, I think, was guilty of being both a realist uh, and an optimist at the same time. And I think the song Stop Em Ja is a perfect example of that. Uh, the second side starts off with a song called Time and Place. Uh, the song is pretty straightforward musically. Uh, lyrically, again, he's talking about poverty, hardship. Uh, as a songwriter, Hugh Mundell just like paints with his words. I mean, you can see what he's seeing. You can smell the street. Uh, you can taste what uh, the air smells like. Uh, talk about a guy who could just absolutely paint a picture with his words. Uh, that's what this song does. This song just puts you right in that environment, the environment he's talking about. Uh, again, you can smell the street. You can uh, you can almost uh, see the despair just through his words. Uh, I absolutely love that song. Uh, again, this guy was writing songs like this at 21 years old. Uh, when I was 21 years old, I could barely pee my name in the snow. And this guy's writing songs like this. It's just, it seems almost unfair, not going to lie. Uh, the next song is Don't Stay Away. Uh, this song just kind of like slaps you in the face. It's just swagger. Uh, again, like I said, when uh, Hugh Mundell writes his uh, activist type songs, uh, he's one of the greatest songwriters in the world. Uh, but sometimes he is just the coolest cat on the planet. And this is just one of those cool songs. Uh, great voice. Uh, I think he is probably one of the uh, coolest dudes superficially speaking, in the history of Jamaican music. I mean, like I said before, I was never that cool. I don't know if you were, but <laughs> you don't have to tell you I wasn't. Uh, the third song on side two is my favorite song on this record, and I think probably the best song that Hugh Mundell ever did. Uh, the song is Can't Pop, No Style. The song is absolutely perfect in every way, shape, or form. Uh, I have totally been guilty of sitting in a stoplight and doing the embarrassing white guy like when I'm jamming this tune, biting the lip and everything. I mean, this song is absolutely contagious. This is one of the greatest Jamaican reggae songs of all time. Uh, this is Human Dell at his best. This is not a political song. This is not an activism song. This is just perfection. Uh, I've always said, if you're going to make a compilation CD of 20 songs uh, to throw into a time capsule for, uh, or, uh, for anthropologists to study 500 years from now and say, this was Jamaican music, this was reggae music, uh, the Hugh Mundell song, Can't Pop No Style, has to be on that. It is absolutely uh, non-negotiable. That is one of the greatest songs of all time. And like I said, you can like... It's embarrassing, but I, I don't care. Uh, the next song is Rastafari's Call. Uh, this song is beautiful. Uh, it's a call to... Basically, I think it's like a call to end violence. Uh, but more than that, this song is just like a love letter to peace. 
And I know that sort of sounds simplistic, uh, but really if you wrap your mind around that concept, it is actually uh, quite awe-inspiring. I really love the song Rastafari's Call. Again, this is a young kid who is looking at the world around him and basically is writing a love letter to peace or the concept of peace, uh, something that's probably foreign to him living in Kingston, Jamaica at the time. Uh, this album ends with the song One Ja, One Aim, One Destiny. Uh, again, the song is a, is a call to solidarity. Uh, I think this song is a call to look around at your surroundings, uh, make a conscious decision to become part of the solution, live a productive life, uh, don't perpetuate, uh, go out in your community and do well, but more importantly, go out in your community and do good. Uh, I, I believe, I really believe that Hugh Mundell, uh, loved Jamaica. I believe that Hugh Mundell, uh, loved Jamaican people. I think that he believed in Jamaica. Um, I, I think he believed that Jamaica could heal itself and become well again. And again, I think that Hugh Mundell in his songwriting was both a realist and an optimist, and I think that the song One Job, One Aim, One Destiny is probably the best illustration of that on this record. But uh, he wants you to go out and be part of the solution, uh, create a healthier and happier and safer Jamaica. Uh, ironically, of course, unfortunately, Hugh Mundell himself uh, fell victim to that in uh, 1983 at just the age of 21. I absolutely love that song. It's a great way to end the record. Uh, it's a great message. And, of course, that was maybe the last song he released. At least, uh, of course, this album came out after he passed away, as it was. Uh, but anyway, that was a little look back at uh, Black Man's Foundation, uh, my favorite record by one of my favorite Jamaican reggae artists of all time. Uh, again, I think that this guy was a total prodigy. I think had he been given the luxury of living a full life, I think that this is somebody that we would be talking about a lot more uh, in a lot more prominence. Like I said, I think you could almost put this guy uh, on Mount Rushmore next to Bob Marley, next to Toots, next to Jimmy Cliff, uh, next to Yellow Man, next to Scratch Perry. Uh, I think he was definitely on that trajectory. Uh, it's just sad and unfortunate that he was not given the opportunity uh, to find out where... And that, actually, it's is unfortunate for us as fans that he was not given the opportunity to fulfill his a uh, uh, full pro professional destiny i believe anyway man thanks so much for checking out this video my name is jamie this is archaic records coming at you from nashville tennessee uh, remember to go out and support your local record store listen to hugh mundell for the love of god listen to hugh mundell Check back every week for Morrissey Monday, my weekly celebration of all things Morrissey and the Smiths. And thank you so much for checking out this video. I really do appreciate it. And I will talk to you next time.